Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the first of our um, uh, episodes of Ask em Asks. Um, we've come up with that particularly snappy title because my name is Richard Askham, uh, and of course, uh, it sounds a bit like Ask, Ask Askham, that kind of thing. It took hours of meetings to come up with that, that name, but, um, uh, but here we are today, and uh, we're here at the Future Print Virtual Summit, which is a new way of talking about and hearing about the print industry, obviously given the circumstances that we've all found ourselves in over recent months. Um, difficult times for many, uh, interesting times for some. So what we thought we would try and do is, is meet up with a few guests over the course of the week uh, and hear their views really from a, a print sort of inside view um, and maybe just the thoughts generally of, of some uh, print uh, you know, sort of veterans, if you like, that have been around the industry a long time, seen a few recessions come and go. Um, and this, you know, this is an interesting one to say the least. So my guest uh, today is Chris Tong, uh, who is the executive director of Ultimate Packaging. Um, the strange thing that Chris and I have in common is that we both went to the same school, but not at the same time. Uh, and also, as it turns out, uh, I live closer to his factory than he does. So Draw from that what you will, uh, but uh, I'm, I've known Chris quite a while now, um, and I thought he would be a good guy to, to kick us off. So, Chris, welcome. Thank you. But obviously, the first question is the guy's got to work out who is the youngest, of course. <laughs> no, we'll leave that. We'll leave that hanging. <laughs> I, I think well, maybe we'll have that as a write-in competition. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and, I, and I appreciate the fact that you've dressed up for us today in your, in your business attire. Indeed, indeed. I thought I ought to go for something striking and uh, uh, distinctive. So, uh, yeah, I spent most of the last uh, eight weeks in uh, more sort of leisure gear than uh, office gear, yeah. generally working from home. So, yeah. uh, think, much think, more comfortable like this, to be honest. Well, I think everybody's the same, uh, you know, in terms of the, the, you know, whatever the dress code was, it's not that anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, people have learned that they don't even need to wear trousers on a Zoom call. But I, I gather that you are wearing trousers today. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. allegedly, yeah. allegedly. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, the might, first... there might be leggings, but they are, they are. <laughs> too they much are information. Yeah. Too much information. So the, the, the purpose, really, Chris, of the next sort of 10 minutes or so, um, you know, I, I, I've got a few questions for you, really, just to, to get an understanding, um, you know, of, of, of how the world is looking from your perspective. But just for the benefit of, of the viewers, um, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about your business background in the print industry. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so as, as you said, uh, executive director now of the Ultimate Group, which really consists of three businesses, Ultimate Packaging, which is wide web, high volume, flexo printed, mainly for the fresh and chilled food industry. Ultimate Digital, which is doing sort of a world leader in uh, doing very similar things to flexo, but on a much smaller scale uh, in digital print using uh, uh, HP technology and then the third string of the business is Sharp Iris which is a creative design uh, automated workflow uh, that sort of uh, complements the other two sides of the business so I've always been involved in sales and marketing um, alongside my two brothers who we own the business so we've got four other directors who are uh, uh, sort of running the main business day to day but uh, we're predominantly supplying fresh and chill industry as I say so uh, you know used to very very demanding customers producing high volume on flexo much smaller volume on digital but obviously doing very different things on digital to what we are on flexo so uh, okay. yeah we've got uh, three different strands where you know the sort of uh, um, the outlook on each is you know completely different really and so you mentioned there the chill uh, food sector. Obviously, the last few months have been quite the challenge for the food suppliers in the in the UK, um, and a, and a challenge I think largely that they've that they've met um, uh, despite of the, the first few weeks where it, it, it seemed like uh, chaos. Tell tell me a little bit about how that's sort of manifested itself in in your world. Yeah, obviously, wide web flexo. Seventy uh, percent of what we do is actually into the fresh produce industry, so it really is right at the forefront of of obviously the, the food chain. So in the early days, obviously supermarket uh, shelves were stripped. You know, there was nothing left in the, in the backup of supply. So our factory runs 24-7, 360 days a year anyway. So over the first, five, first four... Oh, it's my dog. We'll edit that out. <laughs> so over the first uh, five, you know, four, five, six weeks, we were actually getting order levels 70, 80% higher than normal. 
So when you're running 24 seven anyway, and, and obviously you're, you know, you're flat out, it's, that's quite a challenge. So over the last couple of weeks, uh, the levels have settled down to probably 20, 30% higher than normal. But we are now sort of faced with a, the challenge of all our, all our customers are wanting product at the same time. We're normally operating, even though we're a large company, on quite short lead time. So we're now, our lead times have extended. And it's a real juggling act trying to make sure that everybody gets what they need and when they need it. Because obviously, uh, you know, the demands for fresh food packaging uh, are much higher than they are normally. Because obviously, I think the figures are between 50 and 60%. We would normally... Uh, eat in indoors or in, in our houses. Obviously, the rest of it is restaurants, takeaways, yeah, food on sure. the go. So, so obviously, you know, our, our demands are going to be enormous. So, it's just really trying to satisfy our customer base and obviously keeping our own workforce safe. You know, keeping them, you know, keeping them motivated. Um, you know, keeping them sort of uh, on the ball. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, when that tell me when that sort of hammer dropped, um, and and you know, I guess it was a few days before lockdown started that we that we saw the impact in the supermarkets. Um, you know, what, what, you obviously didn't get any notice, like nobody got any notice. How, how did you adapt to that? How long how long would you say that it took for you to find that new level and and operate sort of normally with a with a, a small end? Yeah, I think it took a it took a sort of a couple of weeks because obviously it was like a moving target in the early days. <laughs> You know, so I think we all knew that something was coming, but we never quite know knew how it was going to manifest itself. So uh, actually, uh, you know, I, I was on lockdown in Tenerife. Uh, you know, in the early days, uh, actually before, obviously before the UK, you know, went into sort of first phase of lockdown. So, so yeah, re- really, it was just. Uh, I think uh, in the early days, everybody was concerned. Everybody was sort of, uh, you know, for their own safety as much as anything. So I think the biggest the biggest challenge was was obviously establishing the fact that, you know, the government wanted companies like us to go back to, to, to stay at work. We obviously were, all our staff were classed as key workers. Yep. You know, very, very important that obviously the nation was fed. So I think it was just the, the unknown, but also then reassuring all our people that, that, that really they were key to, you know, sort of uh, keeping, the, keeping the company on the, or sorry, keeping the country yep. on the go. So you were, so you were, uh, I guess, an, an unintended beneficiary to a certain extent of, of this sudden, sudden boom uh, of, of food, um, uh, you know, requirement from from the from your customers. Uh, yeah, how do you see that? You know, has that created any challenges in and of itself? Does it does it give you any future problems? Uh, it certainly gives us challenges. Yeah, because like I said uh, earlier. You know, a lot of our customers are based are used to getting very, very quick and very uh, short deliveries. So, as we've now had weeks and weeks and weeks of orders that are massively above what we normally can achieve, we've obviously got heavy loadings now. We've got long lead times on machines, on every print machine, on all our conversion machines. So, the challenge is now making sure that all of our 500 live customers, they're getting what they need, you know, in time. So it's not, it's not ideal from us from a production point of view, because obviously we're having to chop and change uh, to make sure that we satisfy as many customers as we can. So all of, although the order book looks absolutely fantastic, it's obviously, it's, it's sort of, uh, our business is upside down because we're having to really cope with demands that really are greater than our production levels that we can achieve because we're so like i said we're 24 7 anyway so yeah, yeah you can't no, find any more days no, no no and obviously we can't we can't suddenly produce another machine you know it takes three months four months to uh, install another print machine so uh, so we are where we are so yeah so the, the real challenge for the whole business now is trying to make sure that our customers who are used to special service levels get the service levels that they that yeah. they, uh, they need so and how do you think sorry chris how, how do you think i mean obviously none of us know really um uh you know we all knew where it started but none of us know where it's going to end um uh, what are your biggest challenges do you think for the next 12 months now now you know you said to me earlier on that it had settled down a little bit now and and there is definitely the sense i think that everybody's adapted to 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 this sort of environment uh, how does this play out for you as a business you, have you planned this forward have you mapped what 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 your business looks like in 12 months time yeah, I think uh, our main challenge at the minute is just making sure that we keep hold of all the customers that we've got, that we service them at the right sort of level. We've obviously, we already had plans to put additional production in, but obviously we can't uh, go ahead with that until we really, you know, understand what the new normal is going to be. Mm. So, you know, we're looking to, 
invest. We're, we're happy to invest. We want to produce more volume, but that's not something we can do overnight. So really, uh, the, the biggest challenge for the next three months, you know, with a lot of our staff working from home as well, if they're not in production, you know, there's all sorts of challenges there. So I think it's finding what the new normal is mm. and then really finding a way to obviously get on top of the production somehow so that, you know, we can get our lead times back down to sensible levels, which, you know, the fresh food industry demands really. So, uh, um, so where, you know, where, where we will be in three months time, I don't think anybody quite knows, but, yeah. uh, but the other challenge of, as well is, you know, raw material, uh, uh, costs because obviously a lot of our materials come from abroad you know yeah. uh, obviously we use ethanol in in our inks and in our anti-mist and obviously a lot of that has gone into hygienic products you know hand wash yeah. hand gels so so we, we're already fa- we're already facing some price increases as well which yeah. you know, it's great if you're producing big volume but obviously if you're starting to lose margin off the bottom line that's a challenge as well so so i think we desperately would like to see where the new norm is going to be. And then I think we can start to make some plans, you know, start to um, put some of the investment in place to give us more production. But, you know, that's going to be the third quarter of next year, of this yeah. year, you know, earliest. So, and so and have, have, you, have you been able yet to spot whether there's any new opportunities for you as a business sort of coming out of this? I, I guess the robustness of your um, workflow and, and supply um, has has put you in a in a good position in terms of the industry you supply into. Yeah, I think it's probably going to work the other way, Rich. I think uh, because of the situation we're in, you know, the, the bit that's going to suffer for us, unfortunately, is going to be NPD. It's going to be product development, you know, because yeah. obviously, you know, we've got to make sure that we satisfy the customer base that we've got. So I think a lot of the plans we had for this year, we're going to have to put those on hold. Our technical mm. team is going to be needed in other areas, you know. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, getting right or keeping right what we've got, you know, so I think it is going to put, you know, a lot of NPD we had planned for this year, it's going to actually stall that. Uh, and quite when we'll get back to that, you know, uh, I'm not sure, which is frustrating for me, because obviously that's, that's really where, you know, my focus is. So, yeah. new product, you know, you know, uh, and obviously, you know, the market is demanding all sorts of things, uh, you know, of the plastics industry, you know, the whole plastics debate, you know, that's obviously on the back burner at the minute, environmentally, yeah. but but that's obviously a, a, another set of big challenges for us that we were starting to get our teeth into. But, you know, uh, we, we've got to think about that because obviously that is very important in the future as well, that we get it right for the environment. And there's, defi- there's definitely winners and losers, Chris, in this, in this um, current environment. And as I said, you, you were an unintended uh, beneficiary, really, uh, of, of the situation that we all find ourselves in, which is, you know, which is fine. I think everybody accepts that. But, but what about your thoughts on the, on the wider print industry? And, you know, obviously there's, there's different people at different parts of the curve. You know, we're going to be going through um, uh, an, an unprecedented recession, I think, over the next six, nine, maybe even 12 months. Um, you know, what, what's your view of the wider print industry? That because I'm a bit of an optimist, you know that of me. Now I see this as an opportunity to change. It's just a question of what you change to. What What would your words of advice be to the to those in the industry that that can't see beyond uh, the problem and that they, they can't see the solution? Yeah, I think uh, it's 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 difficult, you know, because I think there's many many different strands of print, and uh, obviously there's. There's lots and lots of different uh, businesses that are suffering. But I, I think, you know, we, we are going to be in a new uh, environment. You know, some, I think some of the changes are going to be for the good. I think, uh, you know, UK manufacturing will eventually come very well out of this. But it's, it's a matter of surviving in the first place to get to a point where, you know, UK manufacturers can really show, you know, how good they are. And I think that's, that's one of the big changes uh, that we're going to see. Um, because I think um, you know we start to see how important that is to, to the whole industry. So, so I think I think the commercial boys. I think there's lots of areas of print where they must be scratching their head, thinking, "What on earth are we going to do?" But, but I think that there will be opportunities. But you know, I don't think we quite know how that is all going to it's all going to develop. So, uh, but we've certainly invested, you know, in, in the digital side of our industry. You know, again, that's part of our business that is suffering at the minute because it's a lot of it's with small brands, a lot of a lot of it is with independents. So you know, they're they're not quite sure where their future is going to be. So mm-hmm. so we're you know we're sort of suffering on that side of the business, but it's where we need to be in the future because obviously, as digital goes faster, then it will start to replace some of what we're currently doing on Flexo. So so I think you know, long term investment is always 
going to pay off in the future as long as you can actually, you know, hold the thing together day to day. But if you've got no revenue coming in whatsoever, that is one hell of a one hell of a challenge. And how do you think? Because I mean, that's obviously there's been a huge change, uh, or largely a huge change in human behaviour over the last six weeks to, towards each other as as family and friends and neighbours. Um, uh, have you seen any evidence in the industry of a collaborative effort to to you know the the strong to support the weak um, to to certainly help them through this situation? Or are we going to see some casualties? Do you think in in the industry and also above that in the manufacturers? Yeah, I think there are. There, unfortunately, there are going to be some casualties. I think in our industry, obviously, there are some specialists, you know, supplying the fresh produce arena, which is, you know, where we are. So, um, so I think, you know, we've all responded. We've all changed our sort of the way we operate, you know, to keep our uh, staff as safe as we possibly can. So, I think there has been some collaboration there. Obviously, if we can't cope with demand. You know, from our customers, there are a few other people who can pick up that demand and vice versa. So I think, um, so I think you know, if, if you're supplying an industry which is, you know, like you say, through adversity thriving, then obviously it's a lot easier than than uh, if suddenly your your whole revenue stream has been cut off. So uh, you know, um, but I say our, our, our digital business, I'm sure it will come back on. It will come back on stronger than ever once we get you know some sort of sign of some green shoots and yeah. what the new norm is going to be yeah and, and as today is proving chris um you know we're here as a, a virtual exhibition um you know that's one of the areas of the world that has been massively affected by uh, by this situation um you know that I, I can't see all of us uh, rocking up to exhibition centers anytime soon um if, if even uh, you know at all uh, some people have suggested to me how how do you see um you know obviously the lifeblood for you guys is to go out and, and go to shows and see what's new and, and chat to people if that can't happen, uh, how do you see the change being the, the best way to affect that? Yeah, I, th I think um, you know a combination of what we had and what we're now what we're now experiencing. That's got to be the way forward. You know, I think there are certain customers you know who love to see you face to face. You know, I think it does it does work to go to exhibitions and it does work to go to trade shows. But I think you know a lot of what has been done in the past is because that's the way it's always been done. So I think. You know, I think there there are different ways of doing it, uh, and I think that you know that's part of the good that will come out of you know of um, you know whenever we come out of uh, what we're currently going through. So I think all the travel, I think you know the amount of people that go to these things, you know, uh, I think is say I think some of that will 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 change, and I think that's got to be good for you know it's got to be good for the world, it's got to be good for the economy, it's got to be good for you know, certain industries. So, uh, um, yeah, I'd be interested to see how it, how it all pans out. I mean, we are nothing if not adaptable as a species, which is, which is largely why we're still around, I guess. Um, but as an industry, um, I think you, you said it there that, that, you know, we've suffered, I think, from a, a large dose of that's the way we've always done it. Um, and, and who would have predicted that, that, that there would be a global experiment that if you turned everything off, how quickly would everybody adapt to that change? Um, and I think one point you touched on there quite interestingly is the travel element. Uh, we've all got a little bit you know, uh, better at Zoom. Um, uh, and uh, largely, I think the BFDs around the world looking at their cost line thinking, well, we don't need to spend anywhere near as much on travel as we, as we used to. Do you see that as a hindrance to your business? I know you enjoy a bit of travel, but also you're, you're forced to do some from time to time, as am I. Um, do you do you see it being a little bit less and, and utilizing technology? I, I think yeah, that's that's got to be the way forward. I think uh, you know it's proved that's what happened over the last six, seven, eight weeks. You know it can be done in a different way. Okay, it, 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 it's great sometimes to look somebody in the eye and to get you know get close to somebody and really see what you know the uh, the inside is something. But I, I think that. Um, you know, an awful lot of the groundwork, an awful lot of uh, the preparation can be done virtually. So, yeah. um, you know, I've um, gone around the country, you know, for doing an awful lot of miles for an awful long time. But, but, uh, but there are much, much better ways. And I think we are going to be, you know, predominantly working from home where we can for probably the rest of this year. And I think, you know, that obviously, you know, um, it's the uncertainty means you've got to operate in a different way because you know if we get a second wave of the, the the pandemic or you know there's there's so many things that can happen you know i think you know until we find a cure 
uh, or uh, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be it's going to be challenging. So sure. yeah, I mean, one of the things that's always been said, of course, is there's no substitute for travelling around the world and shaking people by the hand. Well, of course, yeah. we, can't, we can't do that anymore, can we? So um, uh, you know, I, I for one, I'm certainly enjoying not having to travel. Um, uh, you know, it's it, I think people's perception of travel as being glamorous is from people that don't travel. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you've stood in queues at airports, they're just queues. Uh, you know, there's nothing glamorous about it. But I do think, uh, to your point, that, that that you know people will. You have to change. You've got. You know, if you want to survive, you have to change. Um, and I think uh, you know the industry-wide uh, view is is looking at that now in a in a much sharper context than it's ever had to before. And I think that's a good thing. I don't. I don't know whether you agree. I'm I'm a great one for a, for a change. I like that in any in any sort of business cycle. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's healthy. I think it's got to be done. I think uh, it's the only way forward, really. If you stand still, then you go backwards, you know. So that's always been my my, my ethos, um, you know. And I think um, you know what what we're going through at the minute is only going to emphasise that even more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chris, it's been lovely talking to you. It always it always is. I would shake your hand, but I'll I'll, I'll give you the old yeah. elbow elbow yeah. bump there. And, um, and thank you for taking the time today. Um, uh, I love the fact that you're sitting in front of a sign that says all you need is love. Uh, I think that's what we'll take as your takeaway from, from today's uh, discussion. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again in person sometime soon. But thank you very much for your time today.